This is the original heat exchanger that came with the transmission and the transmission came from Australia. So needless to say, the box was flipped around and beat up quite a bit where this definitely got a little dinged up and folded over. <laughs> so a lot of guys worry about being burned down with automatic transmissions and the DQ500s, different things like that. My plan and my idea was to come up with a uh, modified heat exchanger, external one, where I can modify a larger heat exchanger, like a small radiator, have a fan on it, and then I can use my transmission control unit or ECU to control the fan at whatever desired temperature I predict. Of course, the easiest thing to have been done would have been to tap into this, put a 90 or 50 on it, run my hoses from off of that. Only downfall is if we swap transmission after transmission or we have backup DQ500s, that means every transmission will have to be modified or tapped for that. Or I can modify housing, some type of fitting out of thick aluminum plate. And that way, if we had to do a tranny swap, we would just bolt this plate with the provisions and fittings already tapped into this for leading my hoses directly to the heat exchanger. The original heat exchanger that came with this transmission just placed in position so i can possibly modify that aluminum plate to actually even stick out a little bit further here and that way i can use my original grounding strap that grounds to the transmission casing and modify it and bolt it into position like onto the plate all right now i etched out my template I'll proceed with cutting and drilling my hose. And this is some thick aluminum. <laughs> Very thick compared to this little thin plate that was bolted on here. Oh my goodness. Look at the major difference. But I wanted this extra thickness so that way I can drill and tap my fittings into that. And I have a nice rigid thick piece of aluminum that comes off with some heavy duty taps. Uh, fittings connected to it and I don't have to worry about possibly stripping it out or it coming out really easy. It's enough surface material to grab a pretty good bite on. And of course food for thought would have been extremely nice if I could have found some original style fittings like this that bolts into different Volkswagen Audi group transmissions that would have bolted right into position and that would have saved me a tremendous amount of trouble from fabricating. I could just bolt this in position, come off with my hose and crimp it into place. But unfortunately, this is a lot larger to fit into these ports. So I'll continue with my project of planning. Originally, that did cross my mind, just putting it out there. I don't have the time just to go through transmission after transmission and trying to figure out any type of dimensions because I doubt if it's listed that easily you would have to have transmissions that you can pull these off and test fit to see which one would properly fit into these ports uh, I don't think Volkswagen Audi Group would mention any type of measurements of this that would fit down in there I even grabbed the hoses off of this automatic transmission that's why you see all over here before I even thought about cutting the plate even though I originally ordered this before I thought about that today I even test fitted these hoses to see if that would kind of slide down into the slot and they were a little too large also okay I just dashed out my template and I'm leaving a little extra provision as I stated before for coming off the back side with a ground strap so that's how it's going to pretty much look I'll slice this on an angle and somehow I'll have extra room for grounding running grounding straps right there too that connects the transmission and pretty much grounding the engine to the electronics so if this was bolted into position like that, I'll have an extra slot of aluminum sticking out here, just to mount a ground strap onto it. And of course I can always cut a tab like this, run something bigger and come off of the transmission mount, but either way I'll still ground over here. My adapter plate is starting to turn out pretty good for my heat exchanger. So as you can see, my holes are lining up pretty close for me to be able to bolt it down to position this is a little off because I need to move the plate towards the front of the car so I'm up against my starter I need to notch this out right around in here 
and that way that'll give me the clearance. I'll still have room over here to run a ground strap or put a tab onto this corner for grounding the engine. And even if I cut this off, just make a little 90 coming from here straight over to this corner, that'll work out great. And this doesn't have to be as long. It can come over just like that, 90, crimp it, and we'll have our ground to our chassis and our engine. Definitely getting a little bit closer now and I notched this corner off. So now I just threaded one bolt in to check clearance. This hole is almost lined up right here. This is just a teeny bit off and that's because of this rib that's on the back side of the transmission casing. So what I'm gonna do is just notch the bottom of my plate just to clear this rib right here. The other original plate was a lot thinner and it was notched out on that corner so what i'm going to do as i stated i'll just cut that off i mean technically if i want i can go all the way across here and notch all of this out or just go straight across to clear that rib but i'm just leaving a little bit of corner over here as i stated i can drill and tap some holes and run some ground straps to there just for grounding my engine to my chassis Notched out my corners and everything bolted up great. Just great. So what I can do now is I can take my belt sander and just clean up the corners, round it off a little bit, take off the sharp edges. It's not necessary, but just for aesthetics. And I can't even really say aesthetics because the turbocharger or something's going to be over top of this and probably blocking. So that'll play a little role as far as aesthetic. Right now we're worried about function over appearance but of course we want both but primarily as i stated function we want this to work great this adapter plate half inch thick i can tap it put my fittings on there and connect a secondary heat exchanger to it using all the factory provisions so therefore if we swapped out a transmission unbolt bolt this into position it's really thick we don't have to worry about it flexing or bending or anything like the original piece like this and of course this was already damaged so i sliced it in half because i want all of my bolt holes and everything to be perfect so my next set of holes of course that i need to drill and these are the very crucial important ones as well right here and this is where my flow was coming from my oil flow will be flowing from and to as a return so that is extremely important i want this directly centered and the importance for that is so that it seats properly over top of the o-rings and we don't have any type of leak you can see the little circle pattern around both holes and that's where the o-ring was pressed up against the aluminum plate and that's what i want here um, the only difference like i said we'll have a lot thicker plate less chance of bending or anything or flexing and it'll serve our purpose if i need to once we start getting to the point where we're worried about lightening this car up extremely then we can always drill bigger holes all the way through and just go for you know a lighter plate as well as me by that time someone would have already came up copy the similar design and come up with the fittings that just pop directly in place there's already external oil coolers being sold on the market and that adaptive plate may be perfect for just buying it and just modifying but for the time being i had this stuff i can do it myself the other adaptive plates that i did research for external heat exchangers was upwards of anywhere from 800 and up uh, and I can literally fabricate this part myself for less than a hundred bucks. It really just takes my time. Of course, my time is extremely valuable, but for the moment, I can save 800 bucks and come out here and just use my skills that I already have to fabricate an adaptive plate, which is easy for me. So other people may not have that skill, so therefore you have no choice but to buy it. But if I'm that person that has engineering abilities, I might as well save several dollars and do all of this stuff myself other people can't build an engine and check the tolerances and the clearance and do all of this assembly and tear a transmission apart and assemble. a lot of people do not have those technical and engineering abilities a few people do and a few people do that takes them to the next level and at the same time we're paving the way and pioneering for great success plate turned out very good so if we look underneath we can actually see that the plate is laying flat and seated properly against my o-ring you can actually look back there and see that i got 
proper clearance back there for my notch for that rib coming down so we're clearing that perfectly nothing's touching that so therefore once I tighten my screws down this plate is compressing tightly down on my o-ring which is right up under here and seating everything properly this screw tightens down secures everything tight and therefore we don't have to worry about any leaks if the factory won't leak then that would have been a problem but this is a lot heavier plate and less chance of leakage because you don't have the possibility of it warping or anything like that especially with transmission flex also uh you get into the point where the transmission may start to flex at the high horsepower this plate actually can be somewhat of a brace as well because it's keeping a lot of these supports in position it may prevent some of this upper part of the casing from flexing either way that's getting out there a little bit but you never know until you get to that horsepower level to the point where you're starting to blow open and shattering transmission cases i haven't seen anyone get to that yet with the dq500 transmission and as i said yet i just removed the plate and you can see just from the weight of the plate itself was resting of course i had these plastic plugs out i don't want any debris or dirt to get inside there that's why i plug it anytime i take the plate off for test fitting and plug these holes right back up because you don't want dirt particles to get in there but back to my point you can see where the o-ring laid a groove just exactly laying up against it from the weight of the plate so once we drill the holes properly, we know this thing is going to be setting down and definitely have good O-ring contact. Use the old school punch tool just to make sure my holes are perfectly centered. And as you can see, that's directly in the middle, as well as this hole also. And then what I'll do from this point is drill through and slowly step up my drill bits to the point where I hit exactly that diameter of that hole i can measure it also just to make sure i get to it with the proper drill bit and we don't go any bigger but to that point i'll measure make sure we have the exact size that we need so that it is a nice flow no restriction as far as having the hole too small but yet still taking up the position of getting a proper flow but now of course i still have to drill and tap that so I may go with a smaller hole as I stated, slowly step it up. And then when I drill and tap for my fittings, everything will fit perfectly so that my fitting has the same inside diameter as this porthole right here. I have my pilot holes drilled and right now I'm gonna grab my fitting so I can decide on what size fitting I'm gonna use for tapping this plate. And then I'll slowly step my drill size up to match that fitting. Okay, searched around with the fittings and I decided to go with a 3A NPT thread pitch. That way I can tap the plate. That port is large enough so that the flow will be continuous and not restrictive. So it'll be something similar to the fittings I have for my 4T65B GM racing transmission. I have a lot of extra parts and fittings in here, but the fitting that we will go with is similar to that. Um, it has this style thread pitch and it'll come off into a 90 so more likely I'm gonna get a, a tight radius 90 like this so that way the plate it'll come right off the plate and make a turn that'll still give me low profile clearance for my turbo or any other type of housings that come up and just for reference also just the inside diameter tubing is pretty much close to that as well the tubing that they use for Volkswagen Audi Group heat exchangers so that inner pipe dam is very close to that of a dash 8 so I'll use a 3 8 MPT to a dash 8 close fitting swivel and that way we can thread on the connection and make the turns and radiuses that we need to adapt our heat exchanger